Selamlar. Hmm. Merhaba hocam. Bum. İyiymiş bu ya. Işığı artık şey aldık. Işığı sıkıştıracak bir seçeneğimiz, bir şeyimiz oldu. Bir tezimiz oldu. Artık buna da bir şey derse bir şey diyemeyeceğim. Bakalım daha eğlenceli bir background koyayım. Zoom funny background yazalım. Ver bir şey. <gülüyor> Saniye. Um. Download Bu mimi biliyor musunuz arkadaşlar? Sesim geliyor mu? Geliyor. Geliyor hocam. Biliyorsunuz değil mi? Screenshot alınmalık ya. Dur. Screenshot'ını alayım mı? Işık. <gülüyor> ne hale getirdim biz işte. Artık buna da hayır dersen bir şey demiyorum yani. Şöyle bak şey yapıyorum yani. Güzel görünsün de kenara geçiyorum ya. Yani. <gülüyor> Hocam bayağı iyi olmuş. Bu <gülüyor> Başka seçenekler de var ya. Güzeller. Her ders farklı bir şey geçirir. Baya kurcalayacağım bunu öyle görünüyor. Sana da tavsiye ederim Işık. Gel artık. <gülüyor> Masaüstü kullandığım kamera yok. Telefonla yapılıyor mu? Yapılıyor yapılıyor. Bildiğim kadarıyla. Denedim sonra. Tamam hadi bakalım. Okay. Uh, let's start uh, with this part of the lecture. Um, Let me share my screen again. Um, were you able to come up with other, uh, you know, questions, um, design questions? Uh, you can see, right? My screen, I mean. Yes, we can see. Yeah. Uh, great. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you have any other good? design uh, questions that are not here and not actually a question but uh, i i played uh, crash bandicoot when i was uh, young and yeah. there was some nitro creation when you press one of them you just blow up and die but in the one level there's a staircase made of nitros staircase so, made of what nitro Nitro crate. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and normally you wouldn't just like uh, walk to nitro crate, but mm -hmm. uh, 
if you like take the risk and walk with walk on the stairs made of nitro crates, uh, it actually warps you to a bonus room with hmm. full of life and things like that. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, a, d does it make you um, teleport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, at the end of staircase, actually, uh, if you write a uh, staircase made of nitro crates, uh, I think yeah. it will show. Uh, staircase nitro yasam. Okay. Uh, it's the second one actually. Second video that show. Let's check this out. Um, this one. Yeah, but it's. I think it's a bit long, though. Yeah, yeah. So um, you are um, as doors. You mean these, right? Uh, uh, no. Uh, in in game in the level, uh -huh. uh, they actually. It's not actually a door, but uh, end of the stairs uh, warps you to a new area. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I guess I remembered what you mean, but, uh, I like, um, I this this video, right? Ah, this. Yes, yes, this one. Okay. So if you touch, you go to a bonus level or something like that. Uh, but if you touch nitro kits, you blow up. But on that staircase, there's like uh three stairs made of nitros but when you touch them they don't blow up like the other huh. nitros so they're but you don't know this before you yeah, yeah, yeah. before you jump to them you don't know yeah. that now now so I you have to take the risk because it's since it looks like staircase so you huh? say well maybe yeah that one that's the one sorry oh yeah i i remembered something like this uh, maybe not in this game, but uh, maybe in another game. Uh, yeah, this is uh, a design approach. Like um, you are communicating, basically you are tricking your player, uh, but uh, you are communicating uh, as well. Uh, like they look like staircases. So, you know, a player might be adventurous and try this. Uh, so this is a creative way of designing a door. And uh, like people find these kind of stuff funny and I, I agree with them. Yeah, so this is a nice um, way uh, of in, like placing a door. Uh, and uh, I, I actually um, like uh, Crash Bandicoot uses doors really effectively. I wanted to uh, show you another thing about Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, even before you say, um, crash uh, bandicoots. <coughs> Do you know the role? Um, uh, what was back? I guess. Um, yeah. In like normally, uh, crash uh, bandicoots has one perspective, uh, but. No, this wasn't what I mean. Uh, so you normally go uh, through the um, uh, screen, uh, but in one level, uh, you run towards the screen, you know? Uh, and you are like Indiana Jones, you are uh, escaping from uh, a rolling uh, stone. Uh, it Which... might be something called boulder dash, maybe. I'm not sure. It's been a long yeah, time let's... since I played it. Let's check this. Um, um, yeah, this one. Uh, this level was really uh, hard uh, to pass for me. And uh, this really uh, was confusing because uh, now, uh, like, basically, it's like um, reverse parking for your car. You know, you are uh, using different controls to run forward. Uh, I mean, normally you use your forward mouse button. Now you are using your back mouse button. So your fingers get mixed up. And as you see, like this uh, level shows doors um, in 
like in the reverse order. Like you see the door after you already passed the door, you know? Uh, I mean, this is a great design approach because there is nothing like this uh, in other games. Uh, like before Crash Bandicoot, of course. After that, uh, maybe someone copied this uh, design. Uh, yeah. I mean, do you agree with what I'm saying? Or like, what do you think? Uh, do you think this is a risky design? Because I don't know, it's hard. Well, I'm biased by like, because it's Crash, I will always say it's good, but Mm -hmm. I think for the never played it might be harsh because first uh, you don't have any chance to like stop and look around. Uh, yeah. You have always you you should always be running. Mm -hmm. And you because... should and you should uh, decide uh, with a short amount of time. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, I mean, if you if you don't like if you don't uh, if you run into this. Um, um, this uh, part, you know, um, sorry, let me stop. Uh, if you run uh, towards this uh, wall, you won't go past it. So you should uh, run uh, right. Uh, I mean, it will slow you down if you get stuck on them. So you should run fast. And this is uh, like this level uh, is made of smaller parts, uh, checkpoints, and each checkpoint is represented by uh, a door, basically. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is a good design, I would say. Um, and another um, nice door design I would like to uh, give is Alice uh, Madness Returns. Uh, I really um, suggest uh, playing this uh, and analyzing this uh, because I will uh, give you a detailed analysis uh, in the lecture and if you haven't played uh, maybe you won't uh, find it relevant for you uh, but this is uh, what I will present uh, in the upcoming lecture so all this madness returns will uh, take some time for us uh, and will return uh, med sorry it will return back yeah yeah in the third lecture. yeah uh, uh, I mean, uh, because I I, I really um, advise this game because it's it has some uh, storytelling elements and it has um, some dark elements uh, which are hard to introduce to uh, smaller children uh, and uh, this game basically um, communicates those darker uh, things uh, with um, I mean they like they don't show what happens directly but you understand if you are mature enough and uh, smaller children are not terrified because uh, they probably won't understand the uh, meanings uh, like in the deep level uh, and yeah uh, I like talking about doors um, let me um uh, let me actually search just for doors i can find uh returns uh, doors um okay um i couldn't find a good example but uh i will show you uh later um I mean, in Alice, uh, in the book, uh, you eat a cake and you uh, go bigger and you eat a mushroom and you go smaller. As far as I remember, maybe it was vice versa. Uh, but uh, in this game, um, your character changes size and uh, like to go past levels, uh, you need to uh, sometimes go like become bigger and sometimes become smaller and uh, to do that you need to find a food that uh, makes you smaller uh, and this uh, door is uh, designed so that it resembles a uh, I don't like key key 
place, you know, uh, in a door. So you uh, immediately realize that it should, like, you should be small to go into that because the key is small. Uh, and uh, yeah, after you see this door, you start to look for something to make you smaller, you know. Uh, this is another example of a good door. Uh, and we like, uh, we talked about doors because it's uh, such a basic thing in uh, games. Uh, we can also, uh, I mean, this is just a brain teaser, you know. Uh, it's just to give you an example of um, how uh, crazy uh, even a door can get, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, these are the these are some examples I wanted to show you. And um, if we let me let me go back to the um, sorry. yeah, let me go back to uh, that. Uh, yeah, if uh, those like uh, if you are a game designer and you are not. Um, I mean, a game designer doesn't always have to come up with good solutions, okay? But uh, they need to ask the right questions. Uh, and you will uh, be a good designer when you, when you uh, find the design problems of your own games. And uh, if you can, uh, like, if you can um, sense them and if you can, uh, like, talk about your design problems uh, you can turn them into full sentences then you might um, ask other people's opinion on them and after that uh, they can give you like they can help you out uh, but if you cannot uh, sense uh, the problems in your design uh, then uh, like every design will look uh, like every design you have will look um, good to you and because of that, you won't improve much. And uh, maybe your game will fail because of your poor design uh, solutions that you didn't even think thoroughly, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, I put this um, article after, the, after we talked about roles uh, because um, this uh, part talks about how... Um, how different roles think about uh, the elements in your game, you know? Um, so creative director says, we definitely need doors. Uh, project manager says, uh, I'll schedule some time. Uh, designer says, I'll write a design document explaining how doors should be. Uh, artist says, hmm, I created some assets. Art director says, uh, hmm, like I saw one of your uh, assets, uh, one of your concepts, and I really liked it. Let's uh, move forward with that, etc., uh, etc. Et so uh, there's a long list. Uh, it's a funny list. Um, uh, localization expert uh, translates doors into other uh, languages, you know. Uh, and there are like. There are a lot of different uh, small um, small roles uh, in between roles. You could also say uh, that uh, that um, we didn't cover. Uh, so I think you should check this. Uh, and PR guy says to all our fans, you are going to go crazy over our next reveal. Hashtag game dev, hashtag doors, hashtag next gen, and uh, guy basically publishes a Twitter uh, tweet, and yeah, at the end, I totally didn't even notice a door there. Says the player. Uh, so this is a problem when you are designing your game. Um, you, if you are focused on uh, solely making something because you are you you want to feel uh, like beneficial. Uh, you can sometimes uh, skip uh, what your players are experiencing. You know, so uh, at the end, what is important is player experience. 
So you should focus on the player itself when you're designing the game. Yeah. Um, any questions or anything you want to add? Okay. And uh, by the way, uh, legal people are also important here. The environment artist put a Starbucks logo on the door so we can get sued because of that. Um, and stuff like that. There are monetization designer, you know, uh, this guy designs how your game will make money and profits. Uh, so he basically suggests a downloadable contents maybe uh, into the game that are introduced via uh, the doors. Yeah. Uh, aren't, the, aren't the doors, I mean, the doors could work as a DLC shallow, you know? Yeah. Uh, this is, yeah, this is uh, a point. I mean, everyone in the team um, thinks uh, like things uh, with their side of, like their point of view, but uh, it's it's sometimes makes uh, big teams skip the, skip the important part, you know? That's, that's why um, our uh, that's why our um, pipeline should include uh, prototyping, uh, and we will uh, jump into that. Let me just go into. Um, yeah. Okay. Oops. Okay, that's better. Um, so yeah, uh, we discussed who are making games. And now after that, uh, we arrived on our uh, main main topic and uh, most uh, beneficial uh, topic. How are we going to make games? Okay, uh, and after uh, this part of the semester, we will uh, talk about um, we will talk about uh, how we are uh, creating games. Um, actually, um, before uh, we move on to how part, we need to also uh, like give some information about the industry. Uh, I mean, we discussed uh, the workers, the employees, but we haven't discussed the other big, um, you know, other big players in the industry. Uh, so let me just show you another. Um, I slash show I ha have found. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, we have talked about those. We have uh, a genre list in the art book. And uh, other than that, uh, we haven't really considered how big is the game industry, you know. Uh, there's a comparison of two different uh, fields. Uh, I I consider game industry is like probably closest to movie industry, okay? Because um, there are uh, like elements of those two industries are really similar. Uh, there is uh, there is you know sounds in both of those fields. There are visual effects, uh, sometimes uh, like visual asset design. Uh, if your movie has CGI, etc., uh, and other than that, there are storytelling elements. Uh, there's a scenario, um, but the key difference is uh, our game is interactive, unlike the movie, and our game introduces a goal, and you know a system, a funny system, you know. Uh, but a movie is a movie is also funny, but in a different way. You are basically passive in a movie this is the key difference and uh the sizes of um big games uh, like sorry uh, the revenue uh amounts uh is similar between big games and big uh pro like big um movies such as avatar um like uh, avatar and gta 5 are you know um historically 
published uh, around the same year uh, and they created uh, equal revenue and if you have like if you consider the amounts of people that were in avatar uh, you may see why uh, a game is more um, like more um, money generator you know uh, because you employ uh 50 people and you create something uh, that produces money uh, that's enough for your rest of your time you know um and video game market is bigger than movie industry it's bigger than hollywood and bollywood and other movie uh, makers combined you know um yeah this is something we should keep in mind uh and another comparison is Dark Knight versus Grand Theft Auto 4. So basically, Grand Theft Auto 4 doubles the revenue uh, of Dark Knight. And Dark Knight is a movie that is um, like that is high up in charts in IMDb, you know. It's one of the best action movies uh, according to uh, people. So, I mean, GTA 4 just doubled its revenue. Um, other than that, of course, by the way, this is first week revenue. Uh, but still, it's a good comparison. Um, yeah, top uh, 100 countries by game revenues. This is an old data, but it can give us a clue, basically. Um, so yeah, you can check the numbers. Um, I mean, it's it's obvious China and United States will be uh, on top. Um, Japan is also famous for JRPG genre. And uh, Japan uh, has, um, you know, roots uh, from anime culture, you know. Uh, so uh, Nintendo and Nintendo, you know, uh, and Sony, Sony was Sony. Japanese uh, yeah it is it, it is Japanese I mean uh, there are big companies in Japan and uh, Japan also is good for um, as far as I know like um, visual uh, lenses etc I mean uh, Sony has uh, other uh, effects uh, in Japan uh, other benefits uh, in Japan uh, and they basically have a rich culture uh, actually not I shouldn't say they have a richer culture, but uh, they use uh, their uh, background and culture really effectively into games. Uh, so the and animes as well, and they are using uh, the historical backgrounds uh, into the uh, movies and games. Uh, so uh, you know the dragons uh, are like. Uh, mythical creatures uh, mostly in um, Chinese and Japanese uh, old uh, cultures you know and um, other than that I should say like United States uh, like gives room for people to be creative uh, and I would say they're they're also I mean if you think about Disney and Pixar uh, especially Disney, uh, they are basically uh, stealing uh, Eastern culture, you know, Aladdin and uh, stuff like that. Uh, and they are turning into um, like really nice uh, movies, animations. So uh, like if your game or if your movie has good uh, background, uh, world building and storytelling elements. Uh, I mean, you are, you almost have a sure footing, you know. Um, yeah. Um, uh, probably Egypt is here because this presentation was presented in Egypt. Okay. Uh, and if we see the um, companies uh, like we may see that uh, companies are located in uh, Istanbul and Ankara here. 
and there's a famous company in um, Izmir and Eskişehir. Uh, in Eskişehir, sorry, in Izmir, it was called Mobge, as I recall. Uh, I mean, do you, do you play Kafa Topu? It was Masomo, I think. Yeah, Masomo and Mobge. One of them is responsible for uh, Kafa Topu and other uh, is responsible for Odmar. Uh, it's a great platformer game. And uh, there's Telltale, what was it? Tale, Tale. Uh, Tale. Sorry? Or Tale Worlds. Yeah, Tale, Tale Worlds. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Tale Worlds in uh, Ankara, as far as I remember. Uh, and yeah, actually, uh, like game industry in Turkey is surprisingly good. You know, uh, it's uh, surprisingly good. I'm really proud of uh, the products uh, we produce. Uh, I mean, I'm not even counting peak games because peak game is a marketing success, not a uh, game success. I mean, they're 20, not, not even 20. They're like 12 developers in uh, peak games. Maybe it's more now, but it was uh, 12, uh, like one year before, uh, one or two years before. So uh, like we have uh, some companies uh, and the, the number is increasing and the company's uh, success level is also increasing. Uh, another thing to note uh, is the fact that uh, most um, game companies start with low risk approach and they uh, start with creating hyper casual games, you know, uh, since they are smaller in size and uh, they are, uh, let me just, uh, let me just wait a second. Yeah, sorry. Uh, there was a sound coming out, so I had to stop it. Uh, okay. Uh, like I said, um, most uh, companies in Turkey start with developing hyper-casual games. And... Um, after that, uh, like developers uh, want to create bigger games. And if the company is not going bankrupt and is making good money, then they take a bigger risk and they, um, you know, they plan a bigger amount of time. Uh, and after that, they uh, move on to casual games and uh, mid-core games and even hardcore games like um what was mountain blades mountain blades is also a turkish game by the way and another uh, funny thing is do you know cry engine yeah yeah they're like cry engine um, is created by turkish people living in germany so they have german ed education so I'm not sure if we can call this uh, as a Turkish uh, success, but uh, it's in our genes, you know. So we can go better than that. Uh, I mean, like compare this small, like I mean, th there, are, like if if you uh, have some money, if and if you just uh, find a city, uh, smaller city, and just create a company there, uh, you will probably uh, collect great developers. Uh, and after that, you, I mean, you will basically hire them for cheap uh, prices and uh, like, you will be good to go. This is another possible strategy, by the way. And because of that, uh, you will find a probably harder time to find investors because investors are located in uh istanbul yeah um okay this is a general overview of uh development process so um to develop a video game from start to finish uh we'll talk in detail about pre-production but um it's generally 
planning phase, you know, and after you plan uh, in meetings, etc. You after you plan your game, uh, you create a game pitch. We will uh, go into details of that as well in our next lecture uh, and you create a document um, that tells investors and players about the pitch and after that you create a um, like you create a this is I, I checked this and this is not a common term um, if if like they either means uh, game design documents or they meant um greatest common divisor you know common divisor is like the common ground between investors and uh, developers and uh, the development team basically so uh like they like people should find a balance uh between shareholders uh, and after the contract then uh, the development process starts uh they plan the project uh this is a more detailed project project plan than the plan uh, we have in the pro pre-production phase uh, and after then that after that we uh, have a prototype um, and after some testing with the prototype if the prototype is passing the test you know if it is feeling good uh, in our hands then we jump into production phase uh, in production phase uh, depending on your prototype you may start from scratch i mean you can uh, put your prototype into trash and start from scratch you know if you created the prototype uh really rapidly then you probably don't have a quality prototype so you may find it's you better to um, produce from scratch and after then that's um, again you design some new features you program those features uh meanwhile your artists are producing art and your preferably um in-house sounds uh composers are producing audio and uh there's a testing process of course uh after each um, version of your game and with each version uh, your bugs preferably uh gets solved and uh your your new features are added with each, each feature and after that of course there's a post production phase uh this may uh this like the size of post production may differentiate from project to project but basically you maintain your products uh, if it's especially if it's a, a multiplayer game, you need to uh, listen to your players and uh, listen their, you know, um, uh, questions and uh, what was shikayas Ob objections, not objections. Uh, listen, uh, why complaints? Yeah, complaints. Yes, thanks. Uh, listen their complaints and uh, you fix your bugs with patches and updates and sometimes you also create some downloadable content or extra content extra free content etc while you are um, in the pro, pro like post production step uh, so in general general 20% um, of your time is spent on pre production uh, and 80% is passed with production and after that uh, post production phase begins yeah um i will send you a new link and we will continue um like 20 minutes more and then we are good to go finish i uh, but i have some more things to tell before we are finished so i will send you a new link okay